flight radar, have a small radar contact, 060 at 40 miles. Hi, radar. Tackle flight, is that within our area? Uh, flight tackle, come to 060, please. Roger, 060. Radar, how small is the target? Small enough to be a submarine? Uh, yes, sir, definitely could be. Uh, Roger, thank you. Uh, crew, tackle, we have a small radar contact 40 miles away. I'd like you to man your stations at this time and set battle condition number two. Battle condition two, please. Radar, contact 069 bearing at six miles. Taco flight, I have the contact visually at this time. Stand by my mark on top. Uh, Roger flight, uh, ordinance stand by to drop a son of boy in a smoke on the pilot's mark, please. Tackle flight, it appears to be a snorkel. Stand by to mark. Now, now, now. Boy away, smoke away. Roger, flight going to uh, Cloverleaf Manor. Got a boy was dropped at 10 0 FDR. Mad, mad, mad. Smoke away. Mad for magnetic anomaly detector. Time of the mad contact was one two. A blind man's finger reading a message written in iron below the sea. Six hundred yards, sir. Flight eye. ASW in action. Cold War style. Got him at 650 yards. Moving away, that's down Doppler. ASW standing for anti-submarine warfare. Cold War standing for, well, you name it. Operational readiness. Mad, mad, mad. Constant vigilance. Call it what you like. It all adds up to young America keeping watch on tomorrow with the best that today can offer. The faces of vigilance and the instruments of surveillance. Uh, radio tech, all our contact reporters coming up at this time. Uh, send it as soon as you get it in the radio compartment, please. Alliance 1, Alliance 1, this is Transplant 8, Transplant 8, priority traffic, over. The contact has been localized and classified. And the message goes back to Wing, incognito. At every ASW base, and the Pacific is ringed by them, ready-duty planes and their crews maintain a 24-hour alert and can take off to investigate a contact or assist a ship or aircraft in distress or relieve another plane already on station in less than 30 minutes after receiving the word. On station, chop to us. Refile with ATC inbound. You carry a standard ASW load. Take off at 1700 Zulu. The hour is 1700 Zulu. Translate that into sunrise at Wing 2's longitude. 133,500 pounds of hunter-killer airplane, men, and equipment take off to relieve the Orion still on station. 
133,500 pounds of effective ASW that can go further and stay longer than any other aircraft in the fleet today. 1700 Zulu. Time also is on the wing. In ASW, there are not enough hours or days or weeks in the year to do the job. The razor's edge of time has cut distances to ribbons, and continental and cultural interfaces that were once safely remote are now within a packed lunch range of one another. Nowhere is this better realized than at Operations Control, Headquarters Commander, Anti-Submarine Warfare Force Pacific, Fort Island, Pearl Harbor. Here on one great board, the entire Pacific Ocean and the positions and movements of infinite numbers of bacteria-sized ships are studied as through a microscope. Military ships, friendly ships, others. In an ocean area representing more than 65 million square miles, a submarine contact has been duly noted and will be dealt with during the morning high-level briefing. Just before sunrise this morning, a P-3A returning from an extended range Delta flight gained a radar contact to position shown. One submarine contact in a tri-dimensional arena larger than all the other oceans of the world combined. Whose responsibility is it? In anti-submarine warfare, any ASW problem becomes everyone's problem. As you will note, the area, datum area, is approximately 100 miles from the exercise area where we now have the ASW carrier and five destroyers conduct conducting their operational readiness evaluation. It has been confirmed that this contact is not a friendly submarine. Not a friendly submarine means that it is not a U.S. submarine or one of our allies. Its position and course, taking it closer to an ASW exercise area, suggests that it has come to watch and perhaps to learn something of our ASW capabilities. This ASW carrier, the USS Yorktown, CVS-10, the famous fighting lady of World War II, is flagship for an ASW operational readiness evaluation that has been taking place for several days now. Heart and brain of the operation is the Combat Information Center. Eyes and ears and extensions of these probe a void. From here, the fight for a free tomorrow is being directed and rehearsed blindfolded. Foxes for these ASW hounds are several of our own submarines. Victor, posit. Observation number two, upscope. Their mission is to penetrate the ASW exercise area without detection or interception and simulate sinking as many of our surface ships as possible while avoiding being sunk in turn. Silence is a submarine's great armor, and her weapon is surprise. Mark, 1800. But to be truly effective, she must move, and movement pierces her armor. One five old feet. Little destroyers have big ears, and they can go very deep at times and listen beyond the impenetrable layers of temperature barriers that often reflect or destroy undersea sounds. There are a wide variety of ears in ASW. Some transmit their information over a closed circuit. Others are cast adrift in predetermined patterns to broadcast whatever they hear. Sooner or later, that certain word gets back to ASW Group Combat Information Center possible submarine contact. Destroyers close in. Among them, they carry a wide range of effective ASW weapons. 
The primary ASW weapon is the torpedo. It also can be delivered by rocket to an area far from the firing ship. Or airdrop from a plane or helicopter. Or it may be borne long distances by a drone, remote controlled helicopter called Dash to be dropped wherever the target is suspected to be. Another ASW weapon system fires a multitude of small depth bombs to clear the sea of any submersibles that might lie ahead of the ship. Weapon Alpha, in use by the Navy since 1952, can still deliver a lethal punch to a lurking submarine. Playing an important role in the Navy's systems integration approach to ASW is the land-based Orion. And herein is the key to the ASW group effectiveness in carrying out the four major steps of anti-submarine warfare. Detect. DP scope marked 073, 190 miles. Classify. Man, man, man. Localize. and kill. The Orion can carry over one ton of detection gear and up to three tons of ASW ordnance. And she can go further and remain at the scene longer than any other ASW aircraft. But she represents only part of the complete answer to the submarine problem. Carrier-based fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters provide great infighting and staying power once they have been brought to the scene of the action. A destroyer, once it has arrived in a contact area, can remain on the scene the longest in almost any kind of weather. Can probe the depths with a variable depth sonar capable of detecting the proverbial needle in a liquid haystack. And can deliver more firepower per pounds displaced than any other ship afloat. All systems and vehicles work as a team. But destroyers get thirsty, and in time must be refueled at sea. These birds must return to the mother ship, and the big ones back to land. Transplant 8 has been relieved on station and is almost home. Her relief continues the uninterrupted search in the contact area for the elusive submarine. Continuing pressure is the heart of ASW tactics and the bane of the subskippers, especially in the air-breathing snorkel boats. A submarine is the greatest mobile listening platform there is. Con sonar have a weak noise level bearing 298. Con our sonar.
Con sonar noise level bears 295, have slight compressed cavitation from the contact. Con eye sonar. Right full rudder, steady course 295. Right full rudder, steady course 295, aye. Captain. Uh, Captain County officer. Uh, sonar uh, picked up a noise level at time 1140, bearing 298. It's drawing left, uh, now bears 295. Uh, he reports suppressed cavitation. I'm changing course to course 295 uh, to head to the target. Be right up, Con. Rig for ultra quiet. Aye, aye, sir. Rig ship for ultra quiet. Stay on course 295. Man battle stations torpedo. Plot sonar, the contact bears 294, drawing left. Sonar plotting 294, drawing left eye. The intruder has been detected once again. This time by one of our own submarines that has been acting as a target for the operational readiness evaluation taking place in the area. Con sonar contacts continuing to draw left. Classified possible submerged submarine. Tell radio to make up an unidentified contact report to go to the ASW group commander. Aye, sir. Radio. Stand by for a special announcement. Good afternoon, men. This is the captain. Our operational readiness evaluation took an unexpected turn this morning at approximately 10 hundred. When Commander ASW Group 3 aboard Yorktown was notified by CTF 30, of the presence of an unidentified submarine contact northeast of our exercise area. At approximately 1218, one of our own submarines established contact with the intruder while lying silent in the northeast sector of our exercise area. Commander ASW Group 3 was informed by our own submarine of the intruder's estimated range and bearing. It has been decided to detach several destroyers and aircraft from our present exercise and assign them to the mission of relocating the unidentified submarine contact and track him. We'll go to area X-ray Echo, IFR altitude 2,000 feet. 37, Mr. Helland, X The line between a hot and cold war is too thin to even cast a shadow. These men must always know which side of that line they are operating on. The visiting unidentified submarine has every legal right to be where it is, regardless of the true purpose behind the visit. Ready three, primary, pause, man your aircraft.
Transplant 1 has been searching in that area since arriving on station. The new range and bearing for the unidentified puts it almost directly over the submerged intruder. A few minutes later, the planes of the carrier's BS squadrons are on the scene. The sonar dunking helicopters. The hundred searching fingers of sonar seek the intruder in a sightless world of clicks and beeps and find it. In time, he will surface of his own accord, or we will have acquired sufficient useful information about him to permit resumption of the scheduled ORE exercise. No single weapon or vehicle can do the total mission of ASW by itself. What has been demonstrated is ASW teamwork effectiveness. Operations in a Cold War are like shadow boxing. No one gets hurt, but one keeps in trim. Three ASW groups rotate between our own West Coast and the South China Sea. And their job is to maintain constant operational readiness to cope with any submarine threat that might arise. That might, as in World War II, threaten American lifelines of merchant shipping. Or even fire an intercontinental ballistic missile at us from beneath the sea. This is one of our own Polaris missiles. But we are not alone in the technological race. A good way to understand the problem is to look at our own submarines. What have they done? And what can they do today? During World War II, submarines could cruise submerged for only a few hours at very low speeds. And they were armed with weapons that had effective ranges measured at best in hundreds of yards. These vessels had to surface to charge their batteries and offered a large target for visual or radar sightings. Even with these limitations, in World War II, our submarines accounted for more than 56% of all Japanese naval and merchant shipping in the Pacific. Snorkeling submarines have the advantage of presenting an extremely small target for radar or visual contact, plus the fact that they can operate at considerably higher speeds, either snorkeling or submerged, which makes them increasingly difficult to attack and destroy. According to Jane's fighting ships, the United States has 140 snorkeling submarines of various classes, somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 submarines less and the leading submarine power today. The nuclear submarine is the first truly submersible vehicle, one that does not have to surface at all during a military operation, and yet which has unlimited range, independent of speed. Major improvements in hull shape have made possible greatly increased submerged cruising speeds. The shadow cast by the glare of nuclear power is all but uncatchable. The leading submarine power in the world today has many of these and is building more. Whatever you can do, can someone do it better? It's wise to assume that they might. So that's what ASW is all about. A submarine, that silent, swift, lethal city in a capsule. Shadows affecting our way of life. Shadows we must learn to catch. A.S.W. Around the Clock.